it's a great pleasure for me to introduce uh, Professor Su Xiaoping. Um, he is professor of the Department of Bioinformatics and Computational Biology uh, on the Division of Basic Sciences, MD Anderson Comprehensive Cancer Center in uh, Houston, uh, Texas. And Professor Hu is a member of the Data Omics Core of the MD Anderson <laughs> UPR U54 grant Partnership for Excellence in Cancer Research. And this core is led by Dr. Huang in, at MD Anderson and by myself here at uh, UPR. So his research, Professor Su's research in data and omics sciences is very, very wide. And it includes applications to leukemia, bladder cancer, renal cancer, breast cancer, and so on. Cancer of, of a vital origin, among several other applications to cancer stories. It's a real uh, honor and pleasure to have him giving us this uh, webinar. So, please, uh, Professor Hu, you can start, and thank you very much for having accepted our invitation to give us this webinar. Sure. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Louis. Thank you for your uh, uh, nice introduction, and uh, thanks very much for your invitation. Today, my topic title is Omic Application to Cancer Study. And uh, there will be several topics for this presentation. The first topic is actually so called uh, genomics and the transmitter omics to cancer study. For this topic, there will be two parts. First part, I will talk about the so called bulk sample based genomics and transmitter omics. What does the so called bulk sample based? Because when we submit a sample, it's a tissue sample. And the tissue sample usually contain multiple types of cell, uh, uh, different cell types. It's a mixture of multiple cell uh, and multiple, uh, multiple cell types. So this is why we call uh, a bulk. And this 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 <coughs> concept actually is very important, especially in terms of cancer study, because in cancer study we care about the heterogeneity. What does this mean? Each tumor tissue contains multiple clones, multiple cell types. So this is why right now the new so-called technology is so-called single cell sequencing or single cell based genomics and the transplant omics for cancer study because we we can get Generate data for each single cell, single uh, cell type. When we submit a bulk, bulk sample, it's a, the data actually generated by mixture of cells. In so called single cell approach, the data actually generated based on single cells. There's a huge difference. So I will actually uh, show you the, the difference between so-called bulk-based genomics and the single-cell-based genomics. So this is actually the first topic I will present. Second topic is uh, epigenomics to cancer study, because at the DNA level, there are, there are lots of change in terms of methylation, in terms of system modification. So this is why epigenomics actually is very important to cancer study. And the third topic is so called as a virus detection, because in this, our U54 project, the virus actually is a, is a, is a important topic. So I, I'm going to show you how we're going to detect 
virus from cancer patient with the early sick data. And there's an objective in terms of learning. So first I want to make sure the student will learn about our mixed discipline and be clear about the terminology use. And second objective is I will help a student to appreciate so our mix actually, experience actually require extensive data analysis. So this is why the bioinformatics actually is essential in our mix study. And so the object gives, gives some so-called brief overview of application of our mix to cancer study. Actually, this is the, the title. Anyway, so here I just want to show so-called the, the central dogma of or miss our, our mix our biology. And so, so basically, the first part of the question is what is our mix? Actually, this is something I extracted from a wiki. Our mix is a branch of science for various disciplines in biology, where its name and in the suffix are mixed, so such as genome omics, proteomics, and metabolics or glyomics. And what is the aim of omics? So omics aims at so-called universal detection of genes in DNA level, which we call genomics, and also universal detection of mRNA gene expression level, which we call transcriptal omics and also so called a detection of protein expansion level, which is so called proteomics. Okay. And here just a, a simple schematic, a schematic figure, how the, 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 the dogma, so called essential dogma of our mix looks like. So let's say we start with so called cell. So each cell there is a the chromosome, and then we have the so-called uh, DNA, right? At the DNA level, there's lots of genes, more than 20,000 mRNA genes. And for each gene, there will be mutation, and uh, our copy number change, because in normal situation, each gene has two copies. But in abnormal situation or in tumor cell, lots of genes actually, the copy number will be increased or some of the genes will be reduced. Say for instance, a mega gene, it's, it's an uncle gene. In tumor cell, this gene actually amplifies or the, the copy number of mega will be something like 10, 20 or even 40 copies okay so here so this we call uh, genomics so what what genomics mean what happened in dna level okay and as in dna level we also care about the so-called epigenomics in terms of dna methylation because dna methylation does not change the uh, nucleotide but it's, it's, it's but a specific nucleotide is methylated and actually methylation also is the essential component of tumor, tumorogenesis, okay? So this is why at the DNA level, we care about so-called genomics and epigenomics. And then it's a, it's a so-called transcription. We reach the mRNA level. We want to know the expression level of mRNA genes. And we want to profile the gene expression, say in tumor tissue or tumor cell, say how there's a the specific pathway or gene set are dysregulated. Okay, so here, so this we call the transcriptal omics. And then in cell, the function component actually is protein. So this is why the the, 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 the study of protein function actually is extremely important. 
And so, so this, this here we call proteomics. But this, this is not the topic of their presentation. And then so there is other so called because in, 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 you just see there's lots of so called meta, metabol, met, metabolite. And the, the term is called metabol, metabolomics. Okay. And of course, they say here there's a lip. So this is the study of lip, so called lip, lipidomics. So anyway, so this is just a simple schematic figure to show how the information flow. Okay. And here I just want to share the experience type of so called omics terminology. Just I uh, uh, show in the schematic uh, flow chart. First, uh, the, 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 the terminology actually the genomics. So, genomics is, is a study of structure of origin in an organism. Okay. And so, so here actually the, the structure, what the structure means, basically we care about the so-called the, the mutation, if the, if the nuclei are mutated or not. And we also care about the so-called structural variation, see, if there is a copy number change or not. Because I said in normal situation, it's a two copy, but in, in tumor cell, some gene actually has a more than two copy. Some gene has a less than two copy, just one copy for, for some two, uh, uh, Tumor suppressor gene and for oncogene is a more than so called uh, uh, two copy. But there is also at the DNA level, they also call it translocation. See, part of the, the, DNA, the DNA sequence will translocate from, say, from, from chromosome one to from chromosome six. So we call it translocation. And, and actually, translocation also is a one cause of two, uh, t t t t t tumor, okay? So this is also called the genomics. And then there's the ep epigenomics. So epigenomics actually is a study of so-called location of all DNA methylation by addition of methyl group to DNA. So the basic DNA methylation is a, a specific methyl group to DNA. It does not change the nucleotide, but it does change the, the, the so-called the molecular a molecule of nucleotide. And the methylation is a, another a major cause of tumor, tumorogenesis. And then, so in, when we talk about epigenomics, then other side of epigenomics, which is so-called understanding the function of our chemical tag, that the market genome. So see here, what I'm saying is there is a so-called histone modification at the DNA level, okay? And how we're going to uh, detect the histone modification? Basically, the modification usually marked by a specific histone. And uh, with the new technology like next generation sequencing, we are able to detect where the histone modification occur. Okay. And uh, again, the histone modification regulates gene expression, uh, gene, uh, gene, uh, gene expression or uh, transcription. So this is why the histone modification also is a very important part of so-called biology, okay? And then the transcriptomics. This actually, is, I will say, easy to understand. Basically, it's, it's a study of so-called mRNA gene expression. But right now, actually, we are not limited to mRNA. We also study so-called link RNA expression. What is link RNA? Link is long non-coding RNA. And it is, it is, it is a series RNA, it, but it does not translate into a protein, okay? So you see five, five years ago, 10 years ago, everybody thought the link RNA is, might be just a junk because it does not translate into a protein. But right now, actually, we, we know, Every, the, the, the field of biology know the link RNA does regulate DNA in terms of transcription. So actually it's a very important component of the, 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 the genome. 
So this is why, so right now when we talk about transcriptomics, it's not just the mRNA gene expression. We also care about the link RNA gene expression. Okay. And the last so-called proteomics is a it's a large scale study of protein, with including structure and function. This name just just actually called a so-called analog with the genomics, but the, the proteomics is not the topic of this presentation. And here I want to just briefly talk about the platform for our mix study. So when we perform our mix study, we need the technology, right? And so, so there's several useful technology platform. First is actually so called microarray micro technology. It was developed something like, I think, 20 years ago. And this technology actually is useful for genomics and trans, 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 transcriptomics because it allows us to perform the genotyping and it, it allows us to perform gene expression profile. And but then, since tens, tens years ago, the new so called high pro sequence platform appeared. We actually everybody turn turn this the, the, everybody actually use the, the the sequence platform to perform study for genomics, epigenomics, and transcriptomics. So basically, right now the, the microarray technology is rarely used, but it's still used. Okay. And the, the for proteomics actually is is mainly it, it, it's used the so called mass spectral. And then again. For the omics studies, the bioinformatics analysis is essential because the data is huge. It's not just huge, it's just unbelievable. And without a statistician or without a bioinformatician, the biology, biologists just, there are no way they can handle the data, they can interpret the data. Okay, so actually, in other, in other words, right now, the biology actually is data driven science. It's not a, just a lab-based science. Anyway, so, so just actually, I just want to, to, to emphasize for the omics study, the bioinformatics is essential components of omics study, okay? And so, so just, just I, here, I just want to show some breakthrough in technology over the last uh, 30 years for biology study. Because in, in biology study, what we need is we are able to generate the base sequence of DNA molecular. If we do not know the, 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 the base sequence of DNA molecular, basically we can do nothing. Okay. So the good thing is in I think it's it's a 76, something like the single single sequence machine was available. So the, the, the PCR and then the, we are able to sequence the short, short part of genes. And then the, in something like 2000, the microarray show up, and which can be used for so-called large scale gene expression profile. And then something like like in, in 2006, the, the so-called next generation sequence platform was available. Okay, I think this is the slightly different uh, time which the, the yeah, where the breakthrough in technology occur. And the, just I want to briefly describe the, the Mercury platform. This platform actually is extremely useful because just I said we can. We are able to use this platform to generate the gene expression data for all 20,000 genes simultaneously. Okay, so it's, it's extremely useful in terms of genetic profiling and the DNA copy number stuff. But there's a limitation because when we talk about Mecca array, what happens is we actually design, we have to generate, generate 
probe for each gene, then we spot the, the probe or array. So, so what does this mean? We have to know the, the gene, a sequence for each gene in order to design the array. And then see here, if, if there's a so-called the number of probe too big, it's, we cannot fit all the probe into so-called a small array area. Then this is a problem because we are not able to profile the enough gene. Okay, see, we are not able to profile the, the so-called let's say link harness stuff. And then this is actually the main problem. So the, when we extract the, the so-called the signal, see, to, to in order to generate expression value, the noise level is extremely high because of so-called cross hybrid. So this is why the array platform right now basically is out of so called the, 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 the use. It's, it's not a very, it's not as good as the, the sequence platform. Okay. So here, because sequence actually has a tons of advantage. The first way you can sequence so called a Hundred millions of actually the line it's not hundred million it's a billion in a single line so it's it's a fast and it's it's efficient and actually it's a, 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 a in terms of cost it's very low okay and there's last couple of years there's multiple companies and for most most famous companies is Illumina so called the high seek platform and there is a live tech solid platform. And then the actually the launch launch platform actually is the first platform available for sequencing. So it's pretty, it's, it's pretty old, but it's the first one. And then so another company, the Pacific BIOS, and the, the complete genomics. But the, but the right now, the all four the last four companies already disappear. So the competition is really high, but right now actually everybody just uses the, the, the machine sequencer from Illumina. I think the reason is the Illumina sequencing platform actually is much better than other platforms. And it's actually also cost, more cost efficient. And the, the data in terms of the, the nucleotide, the nucleotide call, the base call, the, the error rate is also much low. So this is why the Illumina the, the platform beat, beat basically beat every, every other company, okay? So here I just want to show what the so-called the Illumina sequence, sequencer looks like. And in this sequencer platform, the most important component actually is so-called the flow cell, okay? And here, just just a simple schematic plot, and the flow cell, each flow cell has eight layers, okay. And what the, the, it's, it's it's a tube. The lay, each layer actually is a tube. What happened is within a tube, the, the, the company actually already pre-manufactured the, the barcode or lots of different stuff. And what we have to do, the lab, I'm talking about the sequencing lab. What the sequencing lab has to do is inject the, the so-called the, the, the sample into the lane. Okay, so each lane. So then, so which means different, different sample we can put into different lane. Okay, so the, in the couple of years ago, each lane can sequence just the one sample. But right now, Actually, we are able to index multiple sample and then put it into multiple uh, uh, index the same multiple sample into a single lane. So, so in other words, each lane can sequence multiple sample. Right now, with new machine, I think it's something like we can put a hundred sample into a single lane. So this is this is why so Illumina, the, the sequence platform is so efficient. Okay, and so. This just the actual number is old. The, the, right now, it's it's a billion at the billion scale, and there's a linear uh, length, see, because it's a short sequence, so we call it length. We, it can be fifty base, 
base pair or 75 base pairs, 100, and the longest one actually is 150 base pair. So the one we generate data, it's, it's a, a shorter lead sequence. Sometimes it's, it's a 100 base pair. Sometimes it's, it's a 150, but it's a prefixed, okay? And then, so when we talk about sequence, there's two different approach. So single end sequence and pairs, I will explain what does the pair and the sequence mean. So is this just a simple cost? And right now the latest platform is Novosec. This, this sequence is actually just extremely, extremely powerful and the cost, cost efficient. And here just, just so-called simple workflow. See, you start with so-called sample preparation and the class generation means basically what happening is just I said, we inject the sample, the library into each layer. And then there's a sequence machine perform and there's a so-called sequence. What happens is that the sequence actually generates the, 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 the image. So each dot actually represent a short lead sequence. And then the software will convert the image into a sequence, okay? Because in this, this platform, it's used, it's used four different color, which represent four different uh, nucleotides, uh, okay? So just I said, I think it's almost not more than 90%, almost 100% mark the are occupied by Illumina sequence and platform. So yes, yeah, here just so there's a so called there's a single and a pair and also see so here the, the first step is the so called library constraints to generate a, a fragment. Okay. So there's, there's a, so here the red bar is a fragment. The single and means just the, the sequence machines just just sequence from the the five prime to this uh, three prior end. But as a pair end actually, it generated two sequence leads. On the left side, they, they, are they, they will generate, uh, the machine will generate a short lead sequence, say 100 base. And then on right side also generate so another sequence lead. So this is called pair end, okay? But right now, the machine actually rarely generates a so-called single, single lead. It always generates a pair and a lead sequence. So here just, just it's a simple example to show how, how the this, this pair and sequence was generated. See, first lead and then second lead, okay? Of course, yeah, the, 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 so this is a pair and stuff. And because the fragment, Length usually longer than the lead length, so this is why there is, there is a gap. Okay, and the, so the pair and sequence actually is too useful in our mixed study. Okay, basically, the, the, the sequencing is a, the, the major technology which we use for our mixed study, okay? So when we talk about the genomics, actually we generate the, the DNA sequence. We perform so-called whole genome sequence or perform exome sequence. So the difference between whole genome sequence and exome sequence, exome sequence, we only sequence the exome region for each gene. The whole genome just, we sequence the whole chromosome. It does not matter if there is gene or uh, no gene, okay? And with, with the data from whole genome sequence or exome sequence, we are able to identify, identify so-called a point of mutation. Say for a specific gene, if there is a specific somatic mutation occur, which will change protein function, function okay? And we're also able to detect so-called structural variation, specific copy number with exome data. And for translocation, we, we are not able to use the 
actual data. We have to use the so-called whole genome data to identify translocation. Okay. Again, so for the transcription obvious. See, we use so called uh, RNA seq is the to, to generate the gene expansion value, and we also can detect the gene fusion. And we are also able to use the RNA seq data to detect virus because if a specific tumor patient, a tumor to a patient which contain virus, the sequence, this sequence platform, so when we generate RNA seq data, it will also able to detect the sequence from virus. So this is why we are why this is why we are able to detect if there is virus in specific uh, tumor patient. Okay. And again, the epigenomics. See, when we if we want to study so the DNA methylation, we we can use uh, so called by software sequence to study DNA methylation. And for the histone modification, we are we can generally so called chip seq. And if we are interested in so-called chromatin accessibility, we can generate ATEC seq. So it's so for for all the different type of so-called omic study, the the platform actually is a sequence platform. And here I just want to sh show you the what the data the, the sequence data looks like. So basically, it, it's a it's a so-called FASTQ format. Each sample there will be two files because it's a pair end. So it's a file one, file two, and it's two files. And the, 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 what happened is the, the, the so-called the lead ID, is in file one and file two, it's identical. The only difference is there is a tag. So it's a slash one, slash two, just means it's a, a first lead and a second lead, okay? And then this is the real sequence. It see, when we sequence, uh, a tumor, a tumor sample, this is the sequence from the tumor genome, okay? And this, this one actually is so-called a quality score because just again, when sequence machine generates a base call, it's, 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 it's a actually convert image into a sequence, a base, base pair. So this is why there is a possibility to have error call, okay? And this the quality score actually means what is the probability the specific base call is a false positive, okay? Because this information actually very useful for mutation call. Anyway, so this is just how I just show how the data looks like, okay? And so with the, with the sequence data, and let's see with with the so called DNA sequence data. We, when we perform so-called exome sequence data or, or whole genomes as, as a sequencing, we generate DNA sequence data. And our purpose is so, so called detect, uh, we try to detect the somatic mutation in tumor sample because lots of tumor uh, cancer actually was caused by somatic mutation in important genes, let's say P53. So, so in our, our genomic study, we actually want to detect the so-called somatic mutation with DNA sequence data. And here I just want to show, show how we perform the analysis with the DNA se sequence data, DNA seq data to identify somatic mutation. So we started with so-called pair end leads is sequence FASTQ5. And the first step is alignment. Ali we perform alignment against the human genome references. And there's lots of different uh, software. The most uh, widely used is the BWA, okay? And uh, because we are interested in so-called somatic mutation, so we have to compare the, 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 the mutation between, between tumor sample and met normal sample. Because so what does somatic mutation mean? Somatic mutation means this mutation occur in tumor sample, but not in normal, uh, met normal sample, okay? And then we, we 
use so called, once we have alignment, we use also lots of different uh, software available. We say use the uh, base model based the, the software to, to cause mutation. Okay. And then, because lots of actually is the so called uh, polymorphism. We are in cancer study, we are not interested in polymorphism. We are actually interested in somatic mutation. So, this is why we have to remove lots of so called uh, variation from our. The, our call, so it's the filtering, and then we we identify so called uh, the, the detected somatic status because just I said, if mutation only occur at a tubal sample, not a new, uh, normal, then it's a somatic. If the mutation occur in both normal and tumor, it is it's a polymorphism, which we are, which are, which is not interesting to a uh, cancer study. And then see so here, even if it's a somatic mutation. But it's, if it does not change amino acid, we so called we so called synonym mutation, we do not care. We only care about the mutation which change amino acid. It's a non synonym mutation. Okay, so so last step we we actually so called a, a annotation step. This is just a brief the the flow chart to, to show how we're going to detect the somatic mutation for tumor sample with with whole exome data or whole genome sequence data. And this is just, just, just example. See here, it's, it's, it's uh, after we have a alignment with so-called IGV, we are we actually able to see how the, the so-called the mutation looks like. Because here is the left hand genome, okay? See, there's a gray bar actually is the, the wing leads. So we align lots of these to to left hand genome from a single sample. And see here, for this specific size, it's the, say, <coughs> the left hand is the T, T actually, because it's a complementary. So T, the basic T is A, but there is also a mutation C. Okay, see? So, so, so basically, what happened in this specific specific position is a mutation from A to C. Okay, so this is just a simple example. What does the mutation looks like? Okay. And again, see, we also interesting so called the, the gene expression profile, which we call transcript uh, omics, and with RNA-seq data. We sequence that RNA-seq data is generated from the RNA sample, the DNA sequence data actually generated by uh, generated from DNA sample. Okay, and here I just want to show also the previous show how we perform analysis for RNA seq data. So again, we start with the, the FASTQ file. Okay, and it's alignment left to the human left hands or mouse left hands. And there's again lots of software available, but right now most widely used software is, is called Star, which is really, I would say, robust and efficient. It's, it's, it's extremely fast. Okay. And once we have alignment to so called each each exome, and we use the number of mapped lead to 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 represent gene expression. So this is why we so called account the the, the, the mapped number lead. And then we, once we have the, the so-called the, the count value, which is the number of map that lead to specific gene. And of course, we have to, to, to normalize a different sample because each sample has a different number of overall leads, map leads, it's different. So that's why when we perform the gene expression analysis, we have to perform the normalization before we do any analysis. And then so once we have a normalized data, we can perform so-called differential express gene, an, uh, gene analysis. See, because when we, we always interested in see the gene, uh, gene expression difference between normal sample and tumor sample. See how the specific gene in terms of expression changed. Because it, it, it will tell us that the, there's a mechanism for specific uh, cancer. 
Okay. So this is why so we perform so-called differential express gene analysis. And we also perform so-called clustering. Okay, when so we have uh, say 50 different tumor samples, 100 tumor samples. And they are, usually there is so-called subtype. And we can use uh, the gene expansion data to, to generate the cluster analysis. And then we also try to associate the gene expansion value with clinical data. Because when we have a project with a large number of sam uh, patient samples, we are always interested in so-called association be between gene expression and the clinical outcome. Okay, so as a here just as, 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 as a schematic figure, see how the so-called gene expression looks like. So, so each of the lead bar just shows the number of map leads. Higher means the number of map leads is bigger. Or as I'm, it, it, Basically, it means the expression level is higher. Okay, so this just show how the expression level was generated. Okay, and so so far, I, I actually just show so called what is the, the, the omics is. Say so what is the genomics, the purpose of genomics, purpose of transplant omics, and here, right now. And also, there's a platform to study to uh, for the, the genomics or transcriptomics study. And right now, I want to show the example. We apply the, all the so called genomics or transcriptomics to the, the Leo project. Okay, so this is, is the paper we just published in May this year in Cancer Cell. And there's the PI is Dr. Nizaka Neil. He is a GU medical oncologist. He, he basically special, specialized in kidney cancer. Okay. I actually, as a bioinformatics faculty, as a collaborator, we provide this kind of bioinformatics support. Okay. And so here we, we study so called the, the lino medulla carcinoma. It's, 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 it's a subtype of a kidney cancer. Okay, and this this can actually is cancer first what they described in '95. It's not uh, the very old, and uh, it actually predominantly happen in in individual with sickle cell traits. Okay, this is a very special uh, kidney uh, disease, and uh, also biased again in African American. So this actually, this, uh, this, this uh, okay, kidney, I would say, uh, which, which would I actually use? It's, it's, uh, it's uh, because of, for our U54, it's some, we also focus on the minority stuff. This, this kidney cancer actually is biased on minority, uh, minority African-American. Anyway, and the, the, the median age is, is uh, so basic, it's young. So this is why this, 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 tube, this cancer is significant, okay? And the, this just figure just show our, our study, how our study was conducted. Because just I said, the cancer is a genetic disease. What does this mean? Basically, the cancer is caused by genetic variation, either in terms of polymer mutation or copy number alteration. Okay, so this is why in this project, we generate so called whole exome sequence data. With the, with the whole exome sequence data, we are able to identify the mutation status, identify the so called copy number alteration status, okay? And again, for any type of cancer study, we are always interested in how the RNA change looks like. So this is why we always generate a so-called this RNA sequencing, or in terms of so-called transcriptional omics to study which pathway are dysregulated in this specific uh, uh, cancer, okay? So for this project, mainly we have 
whole exon data and RNA sequence data. Okay. And here, just the, this figure just shows us the how many sample we have. I, I, we have something like thirty-eight patient sample because it's 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 a it's a rare tumor. Okay, it's very hard to collect the large uh, number of patient sample. This is all the clinical information. But here, it's a, a smart smart B B one gene. This is where the, 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 the so-called sequence data or epigenomics play a role in this project. Because with so-called exon DNA sequence data, we are able to detect the, the mutation and the copy number information. And we actually know for this specific gene, the main, uh, for specific uh, tumor, the main uh, the, the gene actually is a, a so-called smart B1 alteration. And so the, in the end, say here, we can show almost each cell patient sample has a, has a deletion or mutation. Okay. And for the other the, the important in kidney uh, cancer, actually there's almost uh, no mutation. Okay. This figure just, show, I just show you there's another result from so-called DNA DNA seq whole exon data, which is uh, we call epigenomics. I uh, know which is uh, like genomics, okay. But uh, we also have, have another part that is uh, RNA seq data, which is we call transcriptomics. But it's like now here again, it's it's a genomics. See, this figure is so called the, the mutation load. Basically, we summarize the number of muta somatic mutations for each patient. And uh, we compare this, this RMC tumor against other type of tumor. And those, is, is the data actually come, come from the, the TCG project. So this, say for each different tumor type, we have a mutation load. Mutation load is the number of mutation, somatic mutations for each patient. And uh, the, here there's a SKCM actually melanoma, skin cancer. So it, it makes sense. And why is the mutation load is important? Because we actually all know, we know everybody, most I see here right now it's well known. The mutation load is related to so-called sensitivity of immunotherapy. And actually see there's a melanoma, so this has the highest mutation load. And melanoma actually is a, is a the, the immune therapy work best in melanoma, okay? So, so for this RMC, the mutation load is not as high as the, the so-called melanoma. But again, this, this, this here, it's not just a mutation, there's also a copy number. So, so this just show there is a, a large region of gain, okay? And this is another figure shows that we are the focal deletion or focal amplification occur for this specific tumor type. And then here we show this in notch when there's deletion. And notch, because those genes and smart CB1, CB1, all those genes actually are tumor suppressor. So which makes sense because in, in, in tumor sample, Tumor suppressor usually important tumor suppressor usually will uh, lost the copy. Okay, and then say here this is the figures for the so called uh, copy number gain, and it shows this not two has a has a has a gain across multiple tumor sample, and not two actually here is, is a, it's an uncle gene, so which makes sense. And I, so I suggest so far with I show, show the result from so called DNA sequence, which is the genomics data. And again, we have different, we have another part of data which is the RNA seq data. And so it RNA seq data will tell us the, 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 the whole picture of gene expression profile. And this just show. The, the, for this RMC data, RMC tumor sample, 
because we put a different tumor type, CDC, and uh, so, uh, uh, different type of kidney cancer. Okay, and it shows in terms of gene expression profile, this RMC, RMC, uh, yes, the red one. So here is different from other uh, kidney cancer. So even if they are, all of them are kidney cancer, but uh, in terms of uh, gene expression profile, they are different. Okay, so which means that the, the, the mechanism which causes this specific tumor is different from other kidney. Okay. And this actually is again the figure just compares between among three different uh, subtypes. Again, it shows RMC are different from other CCDC, UTUC. Okay. And so again, see here, just, just I explain the, the oncologist I want to know for this specific tumor, tumor type. Which pathway are dysregulated? Okay. Then this is, it will give them the, 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 the insight. So this is why we perform so called the GSE analysis. GSE analysis is called gene set enrichment analysis. It's not as a, as a single as a gene based. And uh, it, this analysis just shows us for a specific tumor type. We we are, we are able to know which specific pathway are dysregulated or changed. Okay, so so here just say here when we perform the, the uh, compare between normal kidney and the RMC, it show this not signal pathway are significantly dysregulated. Okay, so it it give us uh, give the oncologist lots of insight. So this is why the GSE analysis actually is a very uh, useful tool to, for transcriptome or mix study. Okay. Again, this is another. The, 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 this actually is a not signal. Yeah, this is so called. The, Compared between an, uh, RMC and another uh, the kidney subtype, not the like, normal and RNC. Again, it show this same pathway are dysregulated. So, so it, it again show for the RMC, the not signaling pathway are dysregulated. Okay, so here just just the, the volcano plot, but I'm just skip. And what does this, does this mean? Because right now, immunotherapy actually is, I want to say, most important therapeutics right now in, in, in cancer study. So this is why when we perform so-called transcriptomic study, we actually very interested in the, 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 the feature of immuno therapy related uh, the feature for a specific sample. And then see here, when we talk about you know, immune therapy, we know the in, so-called infil infiltrating immune cell or stromal cell, the component of the abundance of immune, if infiltrating immune or stromal cell is an indicator for immune therapy. So this is why we, for each RNA seq each, each sample with RNA seq data, we actually es estimate eight different parameters, which indicate if the immune therapy will work or not for a specific tumor sample. And this just show for this RMC sample, all the indicator of immune therapy actually is very strong against the other kidney sample. So this gives the, the, the oncologist some or clinical faculty some insight to, to, to see if the immune therapy will work or not. Okay, so this is just show the, our, it's a basic science, it's a basic science study, but it's it actually highly related to the, 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 the so-called clinical side. Okay. 
So this again is just the same stuff. And this here, this this actually is, again is it's a GSE just again we with it it tell us so called the the, the which wing which pathway is a different pathway this like it okay I just want to uh, just move quickly and so same thing say GSE okay and so far the, 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 this in this project we actually use so called bulk tissue sample to generate data. And what is the bulk tissue sample means? Bulk tissue sample means it contains multiple clones, multiple tumor, type, uh, tumor cell types. And uh, the, the data is generated with so-called mixture of different tumor types. And it actually, but everybody uh, you knew, in tumor, you kind of study heterogeneity is a very important uh, uh, topic. So with uh, bulk tumor sample, it's very hard to study the tumor heterogeneity. In other words, with the data generated by bulk sample, it's very hard to estimate so-called the, the, the percentage of multiple clone. So this is why right now the new technology we call single cell RNA-seq. Basically, we, we, we generate data with on a single cell, not the mixture cell type, okay? So, so this, this actually is extremely useful because for a specific uh, tumor sample, once we extract a single cell, and once we, then we, if, if we submit a cell sample to the, for sequencing, we are able to generate the data for each cell. In this way, that we are able to estimate so called the, the, the tumorogenity, uh, tumor, uh, tumor heterogeneity. Okay. So, this is why right now, this, this technology actually is relatively new. But right now, more and more PI are using this so called single cell platform to generate the sequence data, RNA sequence data, DNA sequence data to, uh, to study the, the cancer, okay? So I just show you that what the single cell RNA sequence looks like. And here just say that we, we actually extract the single cell from two different uh, mouse and use the, so the, 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 the 10x genomics platform to to generate the sequence data. So here I just want to show, I want to emphasize, when we submit a cell sample, the cell sample will contain many, many different cells. But the, the beauty of this, this technology is when we perform sequence and the data actually is generated sequence by sequence. It's not the mixture, okay? When, the, when we have a, a, a set of sequence data, we know, which which cell generated the, 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 the data is from which cell? Okay, so this is why this will tell us for each cell sample how many for the different type the cell type exists. For 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 example, in this cell populations, when we submit there is. 12 different clusters, which means there's 12 different cell type. Okay. And so, so if, if this is a mouse uh, sample, if we submit a tumor, human tumor sample, we are able to know for this specific tumor, basically how many subclones exist based on the cluster. Okay. And here is this just a difference. This, this data shows there's 12 different cell types. And obviously we want to know exactly what is the cell, 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 cell type uh, ER. So we can actually use so-called as a T cell marker to identify each, each, each cluster, what the class, each cluster means in terms of cell, <coughs> cell population. And so, so here, for instance, 
this CD eight A. See the expression. This is a violin plot, and this this marker highly expressed in in the class zero, class two, and the class ten. So with this information, we are able to see okay, for this three cluster, it belong to CD eight T cell. So this is how we identify each cluster in terms of specific cell type. Okay. This just show that the, the compare that is called the, the the population in as between two cell samples. Anyway, so with with the so called single cell sequencing for each sample, we are able to identify how many different tumor cell type exist, which is extremely useful when we try to study tumor heterogeneity. Okay, so this is why this this uh, single cell technology gain high uh, popularity. And this just shows that again the so called the, the, the gene set initial analysis because for the single cell, there's this advantage. Basically, the right now the technology just able to generate data for about 20,000, uh, 2,000 genes. But uh, we, for the human or mouse overall, we, we have about 20,000 genes. So lots of, uh, lots of genes are, was not uh, sequenced. So there's no information for, for about 80% gene. So this is why the traditional so-called GSEA analysis does not work. And, but uh, the gene set in nature analysis is actually extremely useful or insightful to, to, to oncologists. And so here we actually use another so-called gene set variation analysis. And here is an example, say for instance, three, three cell, single cell samples. And the, this, this one, the 500 VTP, is a drug treated tumor sample. And it actually shows those pathways are highly dysregulated. So this is just another type of so-called gene cell initial analysis for specifically for single cell uh, data, okay? So, so, so far I actually present the, the so-called the application of genomics and the transcriptomics to kind of study. And so that now I'm going to switch it to the epigenomics. Yeah, look, we already over the time limit, and this is just just a, a, a simple schematic plot. And so, in, in, when we talk about epigenomics, the, the 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 most important aspect is so called histone modification. Okay, and histone modification actually is, is detected by histone marker. Okay, when histone modification occur, there are always some kind of histone mark, and there's lots of different uh, of histone markers. And the, 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 the here is just I just show a couple of most important or most uh, widely studied histone mark. Okay, and the, for the for instance, H three K twenty seven A C. This actually is a is the, the histone mark to 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 the location where it usually super enhanced occur, okay, and the H three K four ME three. This is is a active marker. Usually, it occur in promoter region. Anyway, so we we in cancer study, we also always want to know where histone modification occur because histone modification has a significant impact on tumorogenesis, okay? And so, so this, this is how, the, why the sick, uh, chip sick data is, is uh, used in this so-called epigenetic study, okay? 
And when we try to perform analysis on chip-seq data, basically we try to detect a peak because the peak is where the history modification occur. Okay. I just skip this, this kind of the explain, uh, explanation how the, the analysis we perform and show you some the, some result we, we have. This is the data from so called a mouse with pancreatic cancer. And we generate data for multiple different histone markers. Okay. And so here's the peak. See here, the peak is where histone modification occur. And this, in this example, and for this specific location, multiple marker actually was detected at, at, at this, 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 this location, okay? And here some, mar some peak actually is, is very narrow. This actually has something to do with specific marker. And some peak, can, some peak actually is very wide. Okay, this just shows the, the difference in terms of peak, peak, uh, peak uh, nature. Okay. And then this just show So there's a, there's a peak, where the peak is located, actually, it's, 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 it's uh, located at the gene for the so-called TRP53. Okay. And uh, this is another example. The kissed modification also occur at uh, so-called endogenous natural virus. Gene. And this, what does this mean? This actually says some tell us so endogenous, endogenous natural virus actually is important, important in tumorogenesis. Okay. I just show there's the, the, some, some brief result about the triple seq data analysis. And here just say, show where basically for this specific mark, where the peak are detected. See, mostly it's, it's a promoter region because this, this mark is so-called active marker. And some, some say chemos are promoter also, but sometimes it's, it's detected in other location. Okay, it's a tell, tell, it's a give us the PI some idea, okay. And so here, another point is, the system modification usually occur at the regulator region. What does this mean? In the regulator region, usually there will be a, the transmission factor binding, uh, the binding site, which means that this specific region, some transmission factor will bind to, okay, in order to regulate the gene expression. And so, so we we'll see triple seq data. We also try to identify so-called in literal motif. What does it mean? If the specific in uh, motif is in literal, which because the specific motif actually corresponding to specific transmission factor. So if we detect an in literal motif, a specific motif, which means a specific transmission factor might bind to those region. So this gives us some idea for a specific tumor sample, which transmission factor actually is, is important. Okay, so, so this is just gives the PI another aspect of insight. Okay, and here just, just because the motif just usually is something like eight to 10 base. This just show the, the, the result by homo. It's part of so-called chip seq data analysis. Okay. And so I'm. So, so, so this is just the last last uh, part of my presentation. I'm just going to show the so-called the, the virus detection, okay? Because we already knew the HPV virus causes cervical cancer, uh, head and neck cancer, and there's other type of uh, virus cause tumor for other type of uh, cancer, okay? So this is why. 
it's, it's, it's very interesting to detect if there is a virus or not for a specific tumor sample. And with RNA-seq data, actually it's, it's relatively easy because with sequence data, with sequence and platform, it does not matter the sequence for, is from the here tumor sample from a human genome or virus. It, it was it sequence everything. So this is why we are we're able to identify uh, if there is virus sequence or not for, uh, with rna seq data. Okay. And this is this just a virus seq tool developed by my uh, at my lab a couple of years ago to, to identify so called uh, if there is a virus in a tumor sample or not. If there is virus in tumor sample, we also want to know if this virus integrates into human genome or not. So called integrating site, because it, it, it actually matters. We want to know where the virus integrates into. Okay. So this is just a, 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 a tool we develop. Okay. And uh, we actually apply to the, 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 our tool to the TCG data, to the say, head and neck data, and all other uh, the, the type of tumor samples. We analyze more than 7,000 different uh, tumor samples. And here just show the example in, at the head and neck tumor sample, because in head and neck tumor samples, there are lots of uh, head and neck tumor samples actually caused by HPV 16 or 18. And this figure just, uh, this table just show where the virus integrate into, okay? Because it matters where, where the, the virus integrate into the human genome. And this figure just show, say here, some virus actually integrate into TP63, it's, it's, it's a <coughs> oncogene. And here, just just it's a, the figure for the HPV sixteen. We just it just shows as a histogram. We are basically into at the, at the virus side. Which virus gene integrated with human genome? And it shows for the virus and mostly it's, it's E six. And E6 actually is an on, on, virus protein. And the, the second most frequent actually is E7. Okay. It, it makes sense because if for HPV, E6 and E7 are oncoprotein, which actually causes the, 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 the tumor in, in, in human patient. Okay. And here we just just we we perform a clustering to show we put the HP uh, HP patient sample with HPV uh, no we put the tumor patient sample with, with head and neck okay with HPV and without HP they show the tumor head and neck tumor patient with HPV actually cluster together. Basically, it tells us the mechanism which causes head and neck by virus actually is different from the, the, the head and neck tumor without HPV. Okay. And this is just the last table because we perform the, the analysis across multiple tumor types. And it shows here for cervical cancer. Based on our analysis, it's 93 percent, but it might be a little underestimation. And head and neck, it's about 15 percent, and the gastric also is 10 percent. But the other, say, for the linear sample, it has nothing to do with with the virus. Okay. I actually just this just the last slides. The Nizar Tanir is, is a GU oncologist. So I actually collaborated with, with him a lot on kidney cancer study. And feeling 
I, I, our biostatistic professor, actually, I learned a lot in terms of biostatistics knowledge. Okay, I appreciate. And then I also I, I, I collaborated with a with professor at, at a French university on the, the so-called uh, genomic study, on color study. I actually published most people <laughs> with, 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 with this guy. So I, anyway, I just want to say, as a bioinformatics research, we have to collaborate with, with oncologists. So on one hand, we help oncologists. On the other hand, actually, we also learn lots of so-called the, the oncology knowledge from the oncologist. So it's, it's, it's actually, the, it's a real collaboration. It's a two-sided collaboration. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Su, uh, for uh, uh, your uh, uh, exposition that that covers a lot, a lot of theory, a lot of uh, different applications. It was very impressive for the the um, the quality of, of the graphs and, and and the quality of, of the analysis uh, that, that that you and your uh, laboratory are, are are performing. Thank you so much for. Sure, thank you. Let me remind everybody that this activity is coordinated in collaboration between U54, MD Anderson Cancer Center, and UPR Comprehensive Cancer Center, and Alliance, uh, previously known as PRCTRC. So this is a, a combination of grants who are sponsoring this, uh, this talk.